Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I'm here at the Rock Island Auction House taking a look at some of the guns that are coming up for sale in their regional February 2015 auction. And I found a ladies home companion in the catalog. Now when you think about a firearm designed and marketed for you know, a lady around the house, you probably do not think of an eight pound 4570 revolver. But that's what the ladies home companion is. These were manufactured by Cobra from approximately 1990 to about 1994, and they are a rifled, legally a pistol, version of the Street Sweeper shotgun. Now, Cobra's Street Sweeper was so horrendously named and had such a politically incorrect and frankly, in some ways, offensive marketing campaign that it actually drove the gun to be lobbied into being declared a destructive device by the ATF. Uh, Street Sweeper shotguns today are quite rare or uncommon uh, because they do all have to be registered with ATF, uh, $200 transfer tax, etc., etc. Uh, and most people really didn't bother. They were frankly a pretty poor gun to begin with. Uh, well, while Cobra was making those, they were also making the nice version, the, the less offensive, dainty, smaller pistol version, the, which they, honest to God, called the Ladies Home Companion. Uh, like I said, it has a rifle barrel. Uh, it's in chambered for 4570 of all things, quite the large cartridge for something like this. It's heavy, it is difficult to balance, it is quite possibly the worst pistol ever made. Uh, but interestingly, they're fairly rare because there aren't a whole lot of them out there. Uh, needless to say, they didn't sell very well in the first place. And it's an interesting piece to take a look at. Uh, functions a lot like a double action revolver. Got a polymer frame back here, uh, steel shroud, steel barrel, an aluminum cylinder with steel chamber inserts. Uh, why don't we bring the camera back in a little bit closer and take a look at exactly what this is and how it works. One of the first interesting things to note on this, and, and this makes sense economically, is that the ladies home companion here uses pretty much all the same parts as the street sweeper in 12 gauge, except this one's in 4570. So the shroud's the same, the frame is the same, you can see there's a cutout here to give you enough space to get a 12 gauge cartridge into the drum. When I open the loading gate, we can see that this hole is big enough for a 12 gauge round, so it's the same back plate as on the shotgun, but the chamber on the inside is sized for 4570. If you look really closely, you can actually see a, uh, a ring there. I'm pretty sure what they did is actually use the same aluminum uh, cylinder with steel chamber inserts for the 4570. That way they could keep the gun from weighing an incredible amount by having a solid steel cylinder, but they still get the, the steel inserts to withstand the pressure of 4570, which of course is much greater than 12 gauge. So uh, we got the cutout here for a 12 gauge shell, which you don't need. Same with the, the size of the loading port. If we look at the muzzle end, you can see that the bore is much smaller than the actual shroud. That's again because this was designed to have a 12 gauge barrel in it. So instead, we've got a 4570 barrel that's as big at the muzzle as the 12 gauge would, so they can use the same nut on the end of the shroud. Now the manual of arms for this is exactly the same as the street sweeper. What you would do is put a cartridge in here and then you wind the gun one position, put in another cartridge, wind it up, put in a cartridge, wind it up. This holds a total of 12 rounds. When you're done loading, you can go ahead and close the gate. And then we have a safety right here, just a cross bolt. Uh, it's interesting to note that the drum will revolve uh, when you pull the trigger, whether the gun's on safe or fire. So the idea is you're supposed to have it on safe like this when you're loading or unloading. And then when you're ready to fire, push the safety across. Now I'm going to open the loading gate here so you can see what happens. When I pull the trigger, the first bit of trigger pull indexes the drum. You can see the chamber move just slightly. Now we have a cylinder or a chamber directly in line with the barrel, drops the firing pin, and then when I release the trigger, it allows the, uh, the drum to spring forward to its next position. So it's not perfectly indexed until I pull the trigger, which would be right there fire, release the trigger, and the drum indexes again. So it does that, unwinding one shot at a time until it's out of ammunition. Then 
you use this ejector rod, which doesn't quite always line up. Yeah, they didn't quite get this one right. It doesn't quite line up. But the theory is, there we go. You've got an ejector rod to punch out your empty cases. Uh, extremely slow gun to load and unload. Someone has added a piece of Picatinny rail here in place of the original rear sight. You can see it does have a gigantic blade front sight originally. There's no front handguard on this by federal law because this is a pistol. Uh, putting a front handguard on would turn it into an NFA registered any other weapon. So they, they didn't do that. Uh, this thing is very heavy. This is, I would estimate, seven or eight pounds. Um, 12 rounds of 4570. It is perhaps the world's least practical pistol ever. Uh, let's see, there are a couple markings that we should point out on the side of the frame here. We have a Cobra marking down there and the Street Sweeper double S logo up there. On the front of the drum, right in here, we have model LHC, Ladies Home Companion, caliber 4570, and the serial number. And then up there, Street Sweeper Inc., Atlanta, Georgia. So ultimately, the Ladies Home Companion is well deserving of a place in any collection of guns that maybe shouldn't ever have been made in the first place. It's quite thoroughly impractical, and yet still weirdly interesting, probably for the same reason. Uh, if you'd like to actually own this one, it is of course for sale at Rock Island Auction in February. So there's a link right below where you can take a look at Rock Island's catalog page, look at their detailed photos, etc. And if you're interested in having it, you can go ahead and place a bid online right now. So thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and learned something new.